In this tutorial, I want to just quickly go over how to publish a blog post. Uh, and so in order to go to your blogs tool, go to the master navigation, go to marketing, website, and blog. You're going to make sure that you have selected the correct blogs from the left side. You want to find the blog that you want to create a blog post for. In the top right, I'm going to do create and do a blog post. I'm going to do inline edit mode because I don't want to make a draft. And then I'm going to go down. I have my blog post title here. So this is going to be, you know, my blog, whoops, my blog post title demo. That's going to be there. I'm going to save it. I'm going to add some, you know, content, you know, whatever it is. Definitely don't want to make it Latin text, but, you know, we'll make it work for now. I'm going to add it in there. Normally, there'll be something like, you know, a, some pre-CTA text at the bottom, something like interested in X, check out this guide. You know, something pretty generic, but something that's, you know, kind of want to never leave with a dead end. You want to also, you know, just always uh, end with something like a piece of premium content or an event coming up. You know, you can even throw in like a CTA over here to learn more about it. Um, and then in basic blog post anatomy, right? You'll normally want something like a featured image. So I'm going to go into the settings tab and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to, you know, add some sort of featured image that is, you know, relevant to, you know, this blog post. Maybe, you know, this is a, a blog post about, you know, the DD studio, right? So I'm going to add that as a featured image. What that's going to do is that's going to that's going to be the image that's pulled in uh, any time that you share this blog post. You know, once it's live on social media. Um, by default, HubSpot's going to throw in a read more separator. I'm going to delete that really quick because that's not where I want my read more separator. I actually want it after this first paragraph. Um, and so, to, in order to add a read more separator here, I'm going to click where I want it. Essentially, I'm going to go to insert. And I'm going to click on read more separator. That's going to throw in a read more separator here. And just because it's going to look a little weird at first, because you're, it's uh, this kind of like line right here, you're going to want to click on this eyeball at the top to preview the page. I'm going to open a new window and just verify that nothing looks off, that you don't even notice that there's a read more separator there. So this looks fine. I kind of ignore it here because I know it looks fine on the real page. And then I'm going to go back to the front, add a space there, and I actually want to put in where's the, uh, the image uh, that I used earlier. So I'm going to throw that image in there. That's going to look all nice. Where I have you know my blog post title demo. I'm having trouble loading this image. There it is. You know, read time is two minutes. This is being dynamic. Again, this isn't a out of the box kind of tool, but you know, we coded the template to kind of check how much content uh, is in the blog post and just kind of make a calculation based on you know how the average time it takes someone to read you know a specific number of words per minute. Um, so that featured image is there. The read more separator is there, so that when this blog post is loaded on the blog listing page, only the content before the read more separator is loaded. I have my CTA with my pre-CTA text, so it's looking pretty good. I'm going to go into the settings, and so I have my blog title. This is the the main title that will appear, you know, on the blog listing page, on the Google search results page, as well as what's being used in the URL. So my blog post title down here is being translated into a URL version of it. I'm going to select the author. I'm going to say it's, you know, myself because I'm writing this. I can choose what tags it's associated with. So this is a, you know, blog post about, you know, marketing and it's about Reddit and, you know, it's about uh, landing pages, right? So those are the three tags associated with this blog post. So if anyone's wanting to search a blog post broken down by a specific tag and they choose Reddit, you know, this is one of the posts that will show up along with all the other posts tagged with Reddit. Um, I'm going to put a meta description here again. I'm just going to pull some content from here uh, because this is kind of what people will see on the Google search results page before they even click into uh, the uh, blog post. So make sure that it's, you know, catchy, it kind of describes it, and it's going to entice the visitor to really look and read your content. 
I'm going to associate it with some campaign. Uh, let's say it's this test campaign so that you know this is part of this test campaign and so all the visits and the conversions or you know, CTA clicks, the sessions, they're all associated and linked to this campaign. Um, yeah, this is pulling in, this is a featured image. I uploaded one earlier as well as one in here. So because there were different images, you know, it's just going to pull in all of the images that it can find within the blog post and let you choose whichever one you want. I'm going to keep it using this template because this is the correct template. And then this notification email is down here is important because it's saying, okay, when this blog post is published, we're going to HubSpot is going to send uh, a notification email to all of your instant and monthly subscribers. So, you know, every time you create a new blog in HubSpot, let's go to lists, four smart lists are created along with it. Um, where is it? It's higher, higher ed marketer, higher, mar higher education. So we have our, let's see, weekly subscribers, daily subscribers, instant subscribers, and monthly subscribers. Note that you do not have to use all of these. You can use whichever ones you want, but these are the four lists that are created right off the bat every time you make a new blog because these are your subscriber lists. And these are the lists um, that HubSpot will send an email to based on what you've enabled. Uh, to to notify people on some sort of recurring basis. So if we go back to our blog post that we were creating, and go back, and I just marker, my blog post title demo. So assuming, you know, I have all my settings done, I love my meta description, I love my blog post title, my URL is great, the author is correct, image is looking good. I can now publish it now and it'll be live immediately, and then I'll have 15 minutes, 15, one, five uh, minutes before a automated notification email is sent out to all of the enabled notification lists. Or I can schedule for later, meaning I can schedule it to only publish, you know, in a week's time at a specific time, and then still after 15 minutes after 2.24 p.m., so, you know, at 2.39, an email will still be sent out, or, I can actually backlog it and I can choose a date in the past and it'll still be published just like normal. The only difference is that email notifications and automatic social updates will not be sent out. So social auto publishing is another tool that you can enable within HubSpot that essentially will publish directly to your social media accounts like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, something with the title of the blog post as well as the meta description if applicable and the featured image. Uh, we don't have it enabled right now, so we don't have to worry about that as well as because we're backlogging it, it wouldn't even affect us anyway. Um, and then like landing pages, and website pages, you do have a, a version history. So you can check all the revisions that have been made uh, through the life of this blog post. Um, so if you ever make a mistake, you can always go back uh, and fix that. But just to recap, right, we have our content here. We have a read more separator. This is still very important. Note that you actually can put a read more separator uh, inside of a paragraph. So let's say that, you know, I have this one paragraph here, but I don't want to break it up. Well, if I just put my cursor right over here, I can still insert read more separator. It'll look like it's comp like it's you know broken down into two paragraphs, but if we look at the source code really quick, you'll notice that it's still within the same paragraph tag. And our read more separator is right here. It's this little gray text right here. So while in the editor itself it'll look broken, if we go back to our blog post preview. You can't even tell. But when it loads on the uh, blog post listing page, it'll just load it up all the way up to here instead of the entire paragraph. So that's a cool little thing you can do with the read more separator. Uh, something down here also, you'd probably want to throw in a cover image of the guide in case you're using a guide. And then we have our settings. Um, this is where you choose the featured image and this is what's used on your social media and you can always publish it now, schedule it for later, or schedule it in the past. And when you're done, you just press schedule or publish. And the same with like landing page and website pages, if you make an edit, this will no longer say schedule, it'll say update, and so make sure whenever you're done with your updates, you actually press update for it to go live. 